Well, that leaves us with uh, just one more left. One more to go in the classic cycle, and that is the creature from the Black Lagoon. And uh, I fit, I did not even recognize that in back of you, you do have a creature from the Black Lagoon poster. So mm -hmm. just, yeah, you that just one recognized coming. it? I should have seen that one coming, yeah. So I have that. I have... Oh, you have the Gill Man up there, yeah. I, has, I have him watching over us right here. And then this is probably one of my most prized possessions. You know, I actually uh, have that. I have one of those as well. I love this thing so much. If anything happened to it, I would actually be pretty upset. <laughs> and it's actually a little, I don't so use it. Bank, yeah. Yeah, I don't use it as that because just the layout of it is just cool. A nice uh, shot. Yeah, yeah. This thing is awesome. I love it. If I ever come across a black and white one, it's going to cost me a little bit of money. But I definitely would pick up the black and white version too. So what is it about the creature? And some people call him the creature. Some people call him the gill man. Um, what is it about him that makes this one your favorite? So even though I've watched Wolfman more times than Creature of the Black Lagoon, uh, he's just a cool character. And, you know, the costume design is awesome. And, you know, rewatching it, he's really not the villain. Mm -hmm. uh, humans are. You're invading his ecosphere. He didn't ask you to come into his home. If someone came into your home, even on your yard, you would protect your yard, would you not? That's all he was doing. He was perfectly fine swimming around and, you know, and he's just a cool, he's just the coolest monster out of the seven. And uh, yeah, and what they were able to accomplish filming underwater in the 50s was, is just it's amazing what they were able to do and something that I didn't pick up on, but I picked up on it this last weekend when I was rewatching it is maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm over like overthinking it. You can tell me if I am or not. I think that there was a lot of pull from this movie for jaws because that scene where what's her name? Julie, something Julia Adams, Julia Adams, the scene that she is swimming mm -hmm. just she's just yeah. relaxing and swimming and he's under her mm -hmm. and he's getting so close to touching her but then he backs away and he comes closer and he's just watching her and you can see at the pov of her swimming to me that screamed jaws and they i think that there was a lot of inspiration from that movie for jaws but um i it, and then the runtime uh something for all these movies except for the mummy is even though there is not a long runtime, it works. It doesn't need to be much longer, to be honest. Like it's a very, let's start the plot, very tightly paced. So yeah, I, I love this movie. No, I agree. Um, I, I wouldn't put it necessarily at my top, but it is, it is uh, for sure, I think an excellent four-star, you know, classic. Um, and I, I did a full review of this earlier, uh, I think earlier this year. Um, but yeah, like, like I agree a hundred percent, um, the aesthetic design of the character is probably the most unique out of any of them. Um, the fact that they shot it underwater, um, that was the first, I think, I believe it was the first movie to shoot, um, underwater that wasn't through, you know, having it in a glass box or, um, you know, some other way to protect the camera. They had special cameras designed to shoot underwater and in 3d, no less, which, it's even more um, impressive because that, that makes it even a larger camera that you have to do it with. Um, and the, the technical mastery of you know doing that where I've watched things about it where the guy had to, the guy in the suit, you know, had to go and hold his breath for quite a long time to do those shots. And then they would have, you know, um, different tanks, you know, air set up in different spots where he would go and, you know, get some air. Um, and just the simplicity of the story, um, like you said, it, and it all comes back to the same basic thing of uh, King Kong. Uh, the the monster is you know sees a human Going woman. They're they're interested, and they did enter the their domain. So um, they didn't ask for this. They were put. This was put upon them, and you know they act as forces of nature rather than as you know something malevolent. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fantastic movie and uh, has great imagery. Um, it's widescreen. It's definitely, like I mentioned before, that transition kind of film from 
the ones we've talked about to the way things would become in the 50s. So it's a great, great movie. I couldn't agree more. Which movie do you watch the most often out of the seven? Ooh, um, I want to say Dracula and the Wolfman, probably. Those are your go-tos? Yeah, awesome. from, from those, from those. And then the other ones that are like my favorite, because um, I figured this is going to come up, they're ones that are not of the ones we mentioned. So Frankenstein meets the Wolfman is, is among my top five. Um, the Black Cat, which I, which I sort of brought up earlier from the early 30s with Karloff and Mugosi. Um, that's among my top five. I would almost put that at number one. I, I, I love that movie to death. It, it's, so, it's so unusual and so strange. Um, and then uh, Son of Frankenstein. That was the other one. Those are that and then plus Dracula and the Wolfman. Those are my top five. Any final uh, thoughts before we end this? I think this was a really interesting discussion. Yeah, I I don't really think I have too many other thoughts because uh, we also talked a little bit about this subject off camera um, without getting into like a bunch of details. So I'm very happy that I was able to rewatch these movies, some for the first time, some for a second, third, fourth viewing. And yeah, man, I, I can't talk about this subject with my friends because they just they haven't seen them and they won't watch them. Being able to talk to you about this subject is just a very good outlet for me. And I just feel like it's such a weight is off my shoulders that I was able to express myself with all these movies. No, awesome. I, I agree. Um, it's not a, not a subject that I have a lot of people to talk to with either. So I'm always, always appreciative of the chance. Um, so next time we'll, uh, we'll have to start uh, delving deeper into the, into the archives. There are a lot of movies. Yeah, that maybe are... we can do, maybe we can do like a return of the creature of the black lagoon. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's a good one. Son of Frankenstein, the spinoffs, uh, Frankenstein yeah. Wolfman. We can like first, about that. first, uh, first sequels or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They, let's just, a lot of interesting stay away from that. the mummy. Oh, uh, well, well the, I think you might like the mummy sequels because they are completely divorced from, from that movie. They're like, um, alternate continuity. Um, we'll see. No, that's what I, that's like I said before, when I was a kid, I did not, did not care for the, the Imhotep, but, uh, Karis, those are, those are some fun, uh, fun adventure horror romps there um but yeah there's definitely a lot of universal monster movies out there and sometimes you discover more and more that you didn't even know were out there um some of them are totally junk um and others are hidden gems so there's a lot out there thanks for uh coming on tonight and uh thanks again yeah for anyone uh that has made it this far you can find me on youtube under pierce productions and on Spotify, you can also listen to my voice on the Only Film Fans podcast. Hopefully, Ryan will be part of that podcast one day as a guest, but he's a very busy man, so we'll see. Yeah, I'd be honored. Uh, we'll, we'll work something out. Okay, well, okay. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time.